What's up everybody, this is Justin Cussman again here and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things about flash symbols. had a few people ask uh, to see some things about that, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and make a new action script 3.0 canvas. Alright, so we got our canvas here. Uh, so symbols, just to kind of uh, recap from another video that I've done previously, three kinds of symbols, right? So let me go ahead and draw out an object and convert it to a symbol so we can talk about those. So remember select your object, modify, convert to symbol. So three kinds of symbols here. We have button, movie clip, and graphic and each one has its own unique properties that you have to kind of suss out uh, before you know how to use them and in what circumstance. So buttons I covered in kind of a previous uh, instance or video here. So buttons remember are the ones you can create the definitive up, over, down, and hit states, and they're for interactivity. Uh, I want to cover movie clip and graphic a little bit more to give you the kind of the lowdown on what you do with these. So let's start with graphic, uh, and these are pretty similar, honestly, but I'll, I want to break down some of the differences here. So let's do graphic. Uh, as I said previously, always name your symbols. That's really important. So I'm going to name this blue circle. Okay. So it's been converted to a graphic uh, after I click OK. And again, you can tell because it's got the bounding box around it now. All right, so a graphic is one of the animatable symbols, like, like I covered in the animation uh, tutorial. You can convert this uh, symbols and add keyframes, that kind of thing. Now, important thing with symbols in general. Uh, you can animate things uh, on the main level of the timeline with a symbol, right? So say, for instance, I go to frame 30 and I insert a frame. Right, and now I add my motion tween and click on frame 30, move my object. Right, we've created some motion on the main timeline. Right, now uh, symbols if you go internally, if I double click this symbol, I am now inside. You can see this right up here in the top left scene one I am inside the blue circles symbol okay it's like a like a little Tupperware container you open the lid and here's your contents inside now in here I can do all kinds of different stuff for instance I could select part of this symbol change the color okay and this reflects externally if I go back out to the main timeline check it out okay this is this has happened on this symbol now important thing with symbols why why this is is useful to know that you can change a symbol internally if we go over to our library, okay, remember your library contains all the different things that you're going to make inside your composition, inside your, your, your scene. I can go over here and I can take this circle and I can drag a new instance of this circle to my stage. Okay. Now it says, do you want to replace the, the existing tween uh, targeted object? Now you don't want to do that on the same layer, so let me hit cancel on that real quick. And I'm going to start a new layer and I'm going to drag this symbol out to that new layer. I have got another symbol. See, so now check it out. Now I've got two symbols. Now, since I've done this animation on my main timeline here, one of these is animated, one is not. But if you notice, they both have this green color. If I double click on this symbol over here and I change it to yet another color, see, I go back to my properties and change this to orange. Notice as I'm rolling over this, it is changing all of my symbols at the same time. So an instance of a symbol. Okay, you can go internally and edit that, and then that, that instance will change all the way across the screen every time you do it. So say, for instance, these were like little snowflakes that were dropping down uh, the screen here, or, or water droplets. I could change one color instance, and all of them throughout my entire production would change, which is really handy. Okay, now, let me delete, uh, or actually, I'll actually go ahead and leave this here just so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, one of the uh, next important things you can do here, if I double-click this symbol, Okay, this is one of the most powerful things in Flash is the ability to create an internal animation on a symbol. So currently we know that my symbol is you know moving from left to right on the screen. What I can do though is I can grab this, this is busted back down to its vector component elements. I can convert this to a symbol again. Okay, let's just say I convert it to another graphic. Now, the naming conventions start to get weird, so you need to kind of make sure you know what's going on. Maybe if I name this blue circle sub just so I know that it's a sub level I mean there's all what kinds of ways you can you can keep track of that just make sure it's something logical click OK 
Now it's another symbol, right? And so I can do the same thing. What I can do, maybe I'll, I'll shorten this a little bit. I'll do 10 frames of animation instead of 30. We know that the first one was 30 frames of animation. I'm going to choose 10, and I'm going to insert a frame. I'm going to create my motion tween. And this time I'm just going to scale it. I'm going to click here and I'm going to scale my object up. Okay, now notice again it does that for all the instances of this. If I go back out to my main level, scene one, and now I play a scrub, watch what happens. See? Now see, I did 10 frames of scaling, so every 10 frames, boom, resets back to, to zero. It loops internally. See? That's the thing, this thing loops internally. And if I test it, control or command enter, okay, this thing will loop, okay, over and over and over again because that's the that's the change that I made internally. Now here's really uh, and you can do this with, with movie clips and graphics. Either way, the same thing works. They have internal timelines you can you can work with. Now I'm gonna delete this one. And I'm gonna make a movie clip. I'm gonna show you the main difference between movie clips and graphics. Let me make another, uh, let's do a box this time. This box is going to be my movie clip. Okay, we have a graphic up top and a movie clip. I'm gonna make this one a movie clip. Let me double click this. Modify, convert to symbol, and I'm gonna call this one, you know, brown square. Okay, now, same thing as with the graphic. This one has an internal timeline. If I grab it, double click it, okay, it has an internal timeline, right? Different icon, little gear, okay? Let me go back out to the main level here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to animate this thing. So let's uh, take our object, give it a motion tween, go to frame 30 here and move it, okay? Uh, same same type of thing. We have the same you know same type of motion going here, right? Okay. Now I'm going to go internally, double click it. Again, scene one, inside my brown square movie clip. All right. So now this, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to convert this to a symbol. Okay. And again, you know, like brown square sub. Okay. So for sub level. All right, now this one I'm going to uh, create again another 10 frames of animation. Let me insert frame. Okay, we're going to do our motion tween. Okay, and I'm going to move my object scale here. So I'm going to make this smaller. Just so we have a little bit of a difference on each one. Okay, now back out to my main scene. So I did essentially the exact same thing. So now every 10 frames, right? this thing is going to move. Oop, I forgot to let me go back in here real quick here. All right, so now 10 frames of animation, right? Check it out. Okay, back out to my main timeline. Let's test this. Okay, there we go. So now they're, they're essentially doing the same same type of things. Circles getting larger, squares getting smaller. But here's the main thing with graphics and with movie clips. Okay, here's a really important premise with this. If I go into my internal timeline with my graphic, remember this is my graphic instance here. I'm going to go inside here. Instead of 10 frames for this, I'm going to make my animation take 50 frames. Okay, actually, let me undo that and add some frames in here. That'd be the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to uh, insert a bunch of frames here to make this take 50 frames. So let's do uh, right here on this frame, and I'm going to insert some frames. Okay. And again, that will increase the length here. So if I go in and insert frames, and if you've got, uh, you know, a, a, a PC here, you could do a whole bunch of frames at once uh, with with a keyboard command. But I'm just going to go ahead and do a, little, a few at a time. All right, and increase my frame amount there. So insert insert frame. So let's do again 45, 50 frames somewhere around there. Okay, now it's taking a much longer time to go from uh, small to large, right? Go back out to my main timeline. I'm going to do the same thing with my movie clip. So essentially just increasing the amount of time that it takes to do uh, its its motion in general. Okay, so let's do insert frame. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Insert frame. Again, roughly, I, I probably should add a little bit more, but we get the idea. Okay, so we've, we've got, you know, 30 or 40, more than 30 frames is the idea here. Okay, 
Now, watch the difference with these two. 30 frames on my main timeline, more than 30 frames for each one of these internally. I'm going to test this. Okay. Now, watch what happens. See how the pacing starts to change on these? Okay. My graphic, right? My graphic is dependent on the main timeline down here. I need with a graphic to have the appropriate amount of frames. I would have to have 45 frames or however many I put in there for this to show the full animation. It just resets back to the beginning every time. The movie clip, notice it starts to do some really weird stuff down here. That loops internally. It is not dependent on this main timeline. That will loop infinitely over and over and over again. And I can kind of illustrate this by showing uh, something here. I'm going to remove all but the first frame on this. Let me clear, uh, remove frames here. So I only have one frame of each. Okay, I have one frame of each one of these. Watch what happens. I'm going to test this. Check it out. The graphic does nothing. Okay, it's only showing the first frame of animation. It is dependent on that main timeline. So it, it can't do anything. It's locked out. It is stopped. But the movie clip will indefinitely loop. It is playing the internal timeline regardless of what's on my main timeline down here. So that's the big difference between movie clips and graphics. And I think why movie clips are so much more versatile is that these things will loop indefinitely wherever you put them and they only take one frame. That's kind of the key here. So when you're when you're kind of figuring out what to create here, buttons are for interactivity. Graphics are usually, the best idea with graphics are to use these for placeholder elements, things on your timeline that are basically going to be static background elements if you have headers, things of that nature. Movie clips are really the best choice for animation. There's something you can use and it'll loop indefinitely. Uh, you, you can co uh, basically create as many of these internally as you want and they will kind of take place all over the stage. Now, another kind of a note with this. Best for instancing, movie clips are, right? Check this out. I'm going to take this graphic. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I got this movie clip. I'm going to create a new layer. Oop, wrong one there. Let me go back a notch. I'm going to make a new layer. And on this new layer, I'm going to add another instance of my movie clip. Now, check it out what we got here. Each time we make one of these, it's in, it's internal on our timeline here. This, this animation that I made for my brown square, right? Okay that plays in my library. So I know which one I need to snag, the one with the little play button up here on the top left. I'm going to drag and drop this out here. Okay, brown square. Okay, so I've got two of the instances of these now. I'm going to give the uh, the second okay instance, the one I just drug out here, a couple more frames. I'm going to insert a frame. So now this instance has three frames, this instance has one frame. Let's test this. Okay. Notice what happens here, right? So this is this is one thing you always got to watch for is the main timeline. This is why I think movie clips are so much more useful. Is the main timeline, however many frames you have on the main timeline, doesn't matter to this movie clip. This one is looping over and over again, but this one with three frames is playing regardless of what's happening there. So you can kind of see the versatility of these things. When you create instances, the movie clips are a lot more solid than the graphics are. They'll play regardless of what's going on in your timeline. So that just kind of highlights that, I think. So there you go. Uh, that That's something useful with movie clips and graphics. Again, if you have any other specific questions about these things, you can let me know and I'll create a, a video for it. Uh, just email me, justincustman at gmail.com, and I'll try and cook one up for you. All right. Have a good one.